Lava and volcanoes, they are beautiful to see, to watch, but they are also dangerous and it's just fascinating for researchers. We can help people and study a really fascinating topic. In the University of Buffalo, New York, some 2,000 miles from the nearest volcano, Dr. Ingo Saunders is researching explosive reactions between magma and water in an effort to one day help predict volcanic eruptions. There are so many questions about volcanoes because we cannot go into the crust of the earth. When we go to the field and study volcanoes in the field, we see many products of an eruption of some type of volcanic process, but we don't exactly know what formed that. What was it? How do they start? Why do they start? Why does magma rise through Earth's crust? And once we understand those, it's possible probably to be able to warn people. The whole processes that we're interested in are often just too dirty or too violent to do inside. And so we said, okay, we need a place outside. The experiment happens on an isolated site on top of a mountain where ballistic tests were conducted in the 1980s. It is a fairly conceptually simple experiment that tries to replicate real-life volcanic interactions. It consists of melting rocks in a giant industrial furnace to create magma, which is later injected with high-pressure water. This interaction causes water to rapidly evaporate, creating big explosions. This experiment, we had to start from scratch, basically. I had to make sure that the furnace is powerful enough to actually provide enough energy or heat and reach the right temperatures. Then to design a setup, we cannot just take our hands and grab the melt or shovel it. It's just too dangerous. Dr. Sonder has to assemble a steel container on tracks to move the melted rocks away from the furnace to a safe location, as well as a sophisticated and precise water injection system at the other end. It is a very meticulous operation, and any little mistake could ruin the experiment or potentially harm somebody. This assembly takes about four hours of uninterrupted hard work, which is about the same time the furnace takes to turn rocks into magma. Oh, wow. It's glowing. Whoa. Is it sparks? Sure. Don't put your glass above the earth from here. Yeah. Okay. So you see the rock is partially melted. This is hard. There's just like fireworks happening inside of it. Flames, sparks. I'm gonna back away. <laughs> that's that's some Everywhere serious heat. Everywhere there's a, a, a tiny gap, you can feel it immediately. Yeah, I feel like my, I feel like this glove, there was like a little part where I just felt it a little bit more and I was like, oh God, I'm gonna step away just a little bit. The heat radiating from the furnace is unbearable when standing next to it. It heats the rocks at temperatures above 2,500 degrees, hot enough to melt almost anything on earth and able to cause very serious injuries if it comes in contact with someone. The experiment itself takes probably two minutes to conduct. That includes the pouring part, and the, the mixing part and explosion itself. It's theoretically possible if we push in too much water in some weird way that this, this outer container gets smashed and these pieces of iron then fly around. So all of us leave the site and the last person that is myself uh, will hit the start button. That then starts a countdown of 45 seconds. We do one experiment a day, maybe two, and we work all day long. It's a 10 hour day. And if something only a tiny bit goes wrong, the whole day is for nothing. Today it worked. <laughs>